All right, game for an update. James, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, well, today there's uh, a lot of brand new news. Wait a second, Mitch. What? What did we forget? Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on. Game front. Update. Game front. Update. Someone is calling me. Not important. The game front update stops for no one. No one. Even, even my neurologist. You have a neurologist? <laughs> uh, not really. I, I, I think it's, I think it's the, the, the people that... I was going to go to a, a sleep study because I, I have uh, sleep talking wish issues and sometimes some sleep walking issues. Really? Uh, but it's, it's really fucking expensive. Have you ever it's not even... woken up with blood on your hands? Um... James, we shouldn't talk about that on camera. You know Maybe. what? You're right. You're right. <laughs> Text Maybe a true answer later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so game front update time. This is this has been a a pretty big week for news. Um, not really important news, but uh, but news news nonetheless. Um, Fez two was canceled. I guess that's important news. It was weird that it was canceled. Uh, at least that most of us found out via Twitter. Yeah. Is that so, usually how games get canceled? Like some uh, <laughs> some upset emotional tweet? No, I'm pretty sure they do not uh, get canceled from... Oh, by the way, I just noticed that I think one of my pop-up windows just came up on the, the recording, so I apologize for that. Um, but no, people usually do not cancel games after throwing a, a temper tantrum. So for those who don't know the story, maybe we should recap it for them. So, Phil Fish uh, is a, an indie, indie game developer. He, he made Fez... He's kind of garnered a rep uh, reputation for being a little outspoken. He says some some kind of really mean things sometimes. He uh, he, he famously uh, told a a Japanese person who who asked a question at a panel he was on. Uh, who, who the Japanese person asked the question, "What do you guys think of Japanese games?" And he basically said straight up, uh, "Japanese games suck." Mm -hmm. And. And yeah, so recently what happened was he got into a Twitter fight with the annoyed gamer Marcus Beer uh, because a Game Informer came to Phil Fish and Jonathan Blow for quotes regarding Microsoft's recent uh, reversal of their stance on indie game self-publishing on the X Xbox One. What? Yeah. That part, that's news to me. You didn't hear that? No. When was yeah. this? It was, uh, it was a little while ago, maybe a week ago. Wow. No, I missed that too. Yeah, so they, they came to, to Phil Fish for a comment on it, which is a, you know, you'd understand that because Phil Fish is one of the, the bigger indie game developers or more well-known mm -hmm. indie game developers. And uh, instead of just saying no comment, uh, Phil Fish kind of fe felt like insulted. Like, why would you ask me this? Like, and he kind of took to Twitter and uh, made, made a, a big, big stink of it. And Marcus Beer kind of called him out on it. He's like, look, if you're going to... Well, he, he he did it a lot more colorfully than I'm about to do it. Um, but he, his point was basically uh, media is a two-way street. You don't just get to use the media when you're when you're promoting a game. You you it's it's a responsibility to talk to the media and you know tr try to uh, be be helpful to the media so they can be helpful for you. Yeah. And and uh, they got into a little Twitter spat uh, and it ended up with Phil Fish. Uh, basically saying that he's quitting video games and Fez 2 is canceled. And now he said this because of, now, that's the thing is like it didn't seem and I might be out of the loop, but it didn't seem like the person he was talking to from what where was it who was the guy he was tweeting with? Uh, he's, he's from Game Trailers. He's uh, from Game Trailers. Game Gamer. So what what was it that all of a sudden this Game Trailers guy made him so mad he's going to quit making video games? Or was there something else going on before this conversation? I think it was a, a an, an accumulation of a bunch of shit that Phil Fish has had to deal with uh, oh, you know, for, on Twitter. Um, I, I don't even think... It, honestly, I don't think it was just Marcus Beer. I think um, what happened was... People who follow Marcus Beer followed this this whole Twitter fight as it was happening. They tweeted Phil Fish, probably still angry about the things that he said in the past, and they probably tweeted things a lot more nasty than than what Marcus Beer uh, mm -hmm. said in the podcast. And you know, he to be honest, like the things that Marcus Beer said, um, you know, they they were kind of mean. He called him an asshole. He called him a, a hipster. Um, he said he didn't like Fez, 
Uh, but you know, Whoa, it's not you don't cool. like a video game. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Um, I don't mean to. It doesn't sound like it's that bad. It 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 wasn't really that bad. Um, but you know what? I don't know. I feel like my big thing about this is I feel like if you are Phil Fish and you are going out there, you say Japanese games suck. Uh, you have to understand that people are not going to like that. You are in the public eye now. The things you say matter to people. Um, you cannot be surprised when you know someone attacks you, your person or your character because of something you said really made them mad. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if you're going to say things like Japanese games suck, you need to either grow some thicker skin or just not say things that are that blunt and abrasive. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. But here, the thing is, is I feel, and like I don't know the guy at all, but it seems like he's egging it on. Like he wants to be notorious, so he's going to say things that get heated. Because otherwise, we probably, we, I mean, maybe we would know who he is, but we probably know him more because of the odd comments he makes and the responses from the people in the world. Yeah. Right? Right. But... My favorite tweet, and I think that it was a, a, a what was it was a quote. Do you know what the quote was? From who? From Phil Fish. No, I don't. About the "Go Kill Yourself." Oh yeah, it was a it was a Futurama quote. Well, yeah. Okay, I didn't want to say it was a Futurama <laughs> quote yet. I wanted to first say the quote. Sorry, get a reaction. I ruined the joke. <laughs> it's not really like I didn't care either way. I don't care oh. if he was quoting Gandhi. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I think, first off, you should be able to say whatever you want, whenever you want, period. If it hurts people's feelings, you have to deal with the repercussions of having people that don't like you. Uh, oh, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, ju- that's just the way it is. Not, not that I think that we should be telling each other to kill themselves, uh, but I do think that it was, there was a lot of people on the, on the internet that were like, oh man, he can't say that. And it's their right to say that too. Uh, but I thought it was funny that people were like changing their mind when they thought it was a Futurama quote. So it makes me think in my mind, it's okay for Bender to say something, but not Phil Fish. <laughs> That's a pretty good argument, isn't it, Mitch? <laughs> I, I I think the whole thing about it being a Futurama quote is is stupid. That it changes anything. Um, it, it it doesn't change the content of the message just because it's it's from a TV show. You know what does change the content of the message? What? Hold on a second. Let me get another cushion. There. Oh, hey. There. This <laughs> is what I was trying to say. Uh huh. Now okay. I feel what? small. I'm so small. Now I feel small because you're you're like towering over me now. I feel less important. Well, in my picture that I'm looking at, I'm very teeny tiny, <laughs> and you are bigger than the BFG, <laughs> which is not just a doom weapon, guys. Oh, so what were you gonna say before you uh, you got your cushion? No, this is what I wanted to say. Oh, that was what I you had my to arms say. crossed, and I realized I had barely any camera room for this uh, this body. <laughs> uh, what is it called? Body language. Yeah. So I mean, ultimately, just to wrap up the story, uh, you know, a lot of people are placing blame on on either side. I don't think there's a singular thing to blame here. I think it's blame what. The, Blame the fact that Fez 2 got canceled? Yeah, you know, people are upset about it. People were blaming Marcus Beer like, You got Fez 2 canceled, you asshole! No way! I don't <laughs> believe it! There's no way no, someone's going to cancel a video game. How much money probably got poured into it? And I know it's an indie small... It's not like Call of Duty. But you're not just going to cancel a game because of some tweet conversation you have with somebody from the media. Period. So are you, are you saying that Fez 2 is not canceled? Or... Listen, you heard it here first. Fez 2 is not canceled. It's a full go. Now, if I can get in trouble for saying something like that, I take everything I've just said back. <laughs> but you heard it here. Uh, Total you- accountability right now. James Heaney has said that Fez 2 is not canceled, contrary to whatever Fi- uh, Phil Fish says in Polytron. Uh, you heard it here, guys. We have the exclusive. Uh, I'm I'm immediately feeling like there could be repercussions for. Is there <laughs> is there anything? Do you have to be truthful on the internet? No, you don't. No, it's the internet. No one expects the truth. Come yeah. on. 
Well, I mean, I just find it really hard to believe that somebody's going to cancel a game because you put a lot of work into stuff like that. Why not just release it and well, only have like a code that only Phil Fish has the code to and only give it to his friends and then be like, yeah, all you guys that are mean can't play the game. That's a lot more fodder than just canceling a game. I mean, to be fair, Fez 2 was just announced a couple of months ago. It probably was not very far in development, if it had any development done on it at all. Uh, the media yeah. hasn't gotten to play it. Uh, the only people who know how far along Fez 2 is is Phil Fish and the one person who he works with at Polytron. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I guess the, should we move on? Are I guess we, so. Are we Phil Fished out? Uh, I guess so, but, but in all fairness, I must say that this topic brings me right to the fact that I'm going to be at the Fish concert on Monday. <laughs> oh yeah, you you love Fish. I'm so uh, happy. Jack, for you. Uh, Jack bought me a ticket because I was like, I'm too broke, I can't go, uh, and he bought me and my girlfriend a ticket. Awesome. And yeah, and then he said I have to pay him back for it. A <laughs> little bit of uh, Gamefront trivia: the Minecraft show song is uh, what? What song is it from? From Fish or what? It's not the Minecraft song. Which one was it? It was the Skyrim song. Oh, the Skyrim. That's right. That's and it's right. not the same. Uh, all it was is because I didn't play the guitar on the Skyrim song. But uh, when I was writing the lyrics to it, I was writing the lyrics to the song Velvet Sea, which mm -hmm. goes, I was waiting in a velvet sea. Can't do more than this because of copyright piracy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was the inspiration for writing the lyrics. And then Justin and, and Zach wrote all the guitar parts. Yeah, and the Skyrim song being uh, Arrow to the Knee, if you have not checked it out it's one of the hallmarks of the game front uh video library so please check it out <laughs> uh i shouldn't even share this but i'm writing right now and it might never see the day light of day because i haven't finished the dark souls song which i want to finish before dark souls 2 comes out but i've been working on perhaps making a madden song uh <laughs> for the new madden release and I, the thing is is i'm not a madden fan i don't play football i don't barely even watch football unless the Bears what james you look like a football player come on well you'd be surprised i i don't bench as much as i did in high school but nonetheless one of the lines from the song right now is about how uh how um i was gonna score wait what was it it's something about scoring but then i uh took a knee to let the clock <laughs> up. i don't know if you're familiar i'm not that familiar but john madden's always like if I were you, I'd just take a knee and let the clock run out. Like uh -huh. if you're winning and it's close to the end of the game. Uh -huh. Wow, that got... Maybe maybe I need to rethink this song. It sounds boring just talking <laughs> about it. It sounds horrible. Uh, we'll see, but, yeah, we'll but yeah, so I, I guess the other, the other big thing that just recently happened was uh, Dragon's Crown got reviewed by Polygon. And a lot of people were upset because uh, the, gr the woman who reviewed it what you know went into a lot of the the usual they they hit the usual points uh of, of feminism that you know this this game is very it, it puts women in very poor light as in oh god these these pop-ups keep appearing on the screen i'm sorry um yeah what was i saying yeah you're you know, talking about feminism fe feminism dragon's crown you know there's the the sorceress who has like the giant boobs and the the Amazon whose proportions are just so out of whack, it's like, what the fuck am I looking at? And uh, a lot of people got upset because they felt that uh, she was unfairly digging at Dragon's Crown for issues that didn't really have to do with the actual gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, James, have you, are you familiar with the story at all? Uh, the story of Dragon's Crown or this story? Well, this story about... Uh, actually, I am. I have heard a little bit about it, but it honestly all falls into that same group of where I'm like, I don't really have a solid say in this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not offended by her judging, and I think anybody that's going to judge something is going to take their full worldview into account. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I don't think that... I think that she's she's totally in the right in in terms of using it as a it, 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 you know a, a review is a reflection of the person who is doing the review it's a reflection of their their opinion I'm sorry that was horribly stated <laughs> um, but uh, well if, from my point of view you said it very eloquently well thank you that's a reflection of my point of view <laughs> if uh, you know if it's if it's an important thing for her 
to uh, if if she was personally affected by the the feminism or the the misogynistic stuff in in Dragon's Crown. And you know, honestly, if you look at the video review, it's hard to really say that there isn't. There's women who who literally have their legs stretched out. You know, as far as they can in a suggestive pose. Um, the the only females in the game, other like than like while the, they're fighting. No, no, no. It's like little portraits of pictures. You you come across uh, pornography with with clothes, basically. Okay. Soft <laughs> pornography. Yeah, uh, and you know, it's just she she has good points. I'll, I will say. My question is. I want to know how the review selection process went. And I know it's horrible to say, why is a woman reviewing this game? I, that's not, I'm not making accusations or anything. What did I'm you just, just say? I'm curious because it has not been a secret that Dragon's Crown is this style of game. It's a, it's a male adolescent fantasy, you know, it's the a cartoony game. Yeah. But the, the, the females are all very out of proportion in terms of how sexual they are. Um, and this, this controversy about the sorceress is not new. Um, so I'm just, I'm just curious. I, to me, when, from my experience, whenever I want to review a game, I, I let my boss know, like, I'm really interested in Dragon's Crown. I'm a huge fan of prior Vanillaware games, blah, 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 blah. I think the game looks awesome from what I've seen so far. Um, I can't imagine someone with very high feminist ideals looking at dragon's crown um over over the course of its you know development up to its release and saying that looks like a game i want to play i want to review that game Mm -hmm. um so that's just that's my that's my curiosity i want to know how that selection process went well Um, i'm gonna have to say this is gonna probably get into the nitty-gritty of things that i don't understand maybe i don't want to understand mitch but if, if you already go into a game thinking you're going to like it, is that a good enough reason to say you want to review it? Or And if, if that is, if it's like, I'm so interested, I want to play this game, is it not then okay for somebody's like, that game looks bad, I want to review it, because I know I'm not going to like it. I feel like it's two things. The only thing that I think is better than either of those views is going in and being like, you know what, I really don't know what to think of this game, or I haven't heard much of it. I'd like to take a fresh perspective with no preconceived ideas. I, I can understand that view. For from my perspective, it would be like, in, in my view, a review is meant to serve the purposes of the people who are interested in a game. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't mean that in terms of it. Need it needs to be you know a good review so that the people <laughs> who are interested in the game want to go buy it. I mean that it doesn't seem fair to me that the people who are reading a review, like. For example, let's say Madden. We have all the fans who are who are looking forward to the new review of Madden. Um, the, the, the fans of Madden are the only people who really care about reading that review. Mm-hmm. Is it fair to them if for the review of Madden, they get me to do the review? I hate football games. I would never you know, want to play a football game for more than 20 minutes at a time. <laughs> Do you think it would be fair to the people who are waiting for that review if I, who hate sports games, would would write the review? Now, I I believe you've got a really damn good point, Mitch, and I, I'm not trying to nail you here, so I'd even give you one on the <laughs> scoreboard. But I think Madden and sports games are very different than, than what we're talking about here because you have to have a legitimate interest in the mechanics of a sport that you can learn actually playing. Whereas a fantasy game, she might be a fan of some fantasy games, and she's mm-hmm. looking at this fantasy game and thinking to herself, I don't like the art direction of this. I want to review it because I want people to know what I think of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, and that's, now that's... you're right on Madden. Like, if somebody's gonna like, oh, oh, I need to pick up the new review of Ben to see if I'm gonna like it because I like 2012, 11, 10, 9. What's new? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like I've never seen football unless you're talking about soccer, and I hate soccer. <laughs> like, and then read a review by that person. It's not gonna help you at all. Yeah, it's but... a, it's a good counterpoint. Um, I guess my thing is, it's true. She could be a fan of 2D, you know, action games. She could even be a fan of Vanillaware games. I just personally feel like if I was in her shoes and I had such high ideals about feminism, um, it would be no secret to me that Dragon's Crown would be a game that would piss me off. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, 
I probably would not even want to play it, much less review it. Yeah, and I guess that would go further is like, what kind of a person knows they're going to dislike something, but sits themselves through the torture? Because unless I'm wrong, if you're going to review a game, you pretty much have to beat it, right? Like, you have to play the game. Mm -hmm. You can't review it unless you finish it? I don't know. Can you? Generally, you, you it's frowned upon if you do not finish a game and you review it. <laughs> so that, that says that she's either... She's willing to sit through something that she's not going to enjoy to the very end just so she can say her opinions about these things. And then I'd say she earned it. She sat yeah. through it or or she didn't. I don't know. I wouldn't I probably wouldn't want to review something I didn't want to play because it's torture to play through a game. And I've done it. Yeah. Time and time again. Yeah. And just to further clarify my point, I'm not saying that, you know, she shouldn't review this game because she's a woman. Please do not. Uh, I can't believe you just said that. Again. I am not being a, a sexist pig. Um, I, I yeah, that's that's not the point I'm trying to make. I and I do think also that the conversation of uh, you know the the misogyny in Dragon's Crown is a conversation worth having. I just don't think that it's worth having in a review. And to be fair, you know, a lot of people kind of blew this issue out of proportion, which is why we're we're actually talking about it. But to be fair to to Danielle's review. She doesn't really spend that much time talking about this issue. She does have several good points about Dragon's Crown that could justify a 6.5 score. That She says that the game is very repetitive. It is very repetitive. You play the same nine levels uh, in, sl in slight variations of them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's my thing. I, I think, that's, I, I think we, we kind of both got our points out about this issue. No, oh, absolutely. I, I have a hard time having a point because, I mean, I didn't read the review. I've only heard what people are saying about the review, and so I'm undecided on it. I just, from my perspective, I think it is a good insight on how people are picked to do a review. Yeah. yeah. You know? All right. Well, I guess that's uh, the game front update for today. We got a meeting coming up in, like, nine minutes, James. Holy I cow, Mitch. But I gotta say, I think this is a pretty good update. It feels like the good old days. Oh, the good old days. High five. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, All right guys. guys. Oh, jinx. Don't for Mitch. Jinx. All right, I'll... Come on, okay. go ahead. Just, just I'm gonna it, just keep... Please, James, just... Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.